My name is Lisa Sophie Laurent, and I'm a YouTuber, journalist, and author from Berlin. I grew up in Augsburg in Bavaria, and my YouTube journey started there almost 10 years ago. In 2010, I was 15 years old, and I was angry. In my free time, I was working for our local newspaper. Every week we had an editorial meeting and every week I had a big discussion with my chief editor because we had different opinions about the topics that I should write about. He wanted me to write about the opening of a new shopping center, while I much rather would have written about the graffiti scene in our city and about their political messages. My chief editor, as cliche as that sounds, wanted me to go to the summer party of the Rabbit Breeders Club. While I wanted to interview the mayor and ask him why the youth center in my part of town was in such a bad repair. Because I was so angry about the topics that he forced me to cover, I was looking for a new creative outlet. At that time, I already knew about YouTube, but I only associated it with cat videos, music videos, or movie trailers. But when I took a closer look, I realized that there were quite a few, that there were quite a few young people on the, on the platform who were doing their own kinds of shows. They created comedy videos or short films without having a big budget or a big team, and that inspired me to do the same thing. Together with a few friends, I started uploading parodies of TV shows, for example, Germany's Next Top Model, addressing the unrealistic body images that they're showing and the pressure that they're putting on young girls. But still, this was all just a nice hobby that I did for fun. Up until in 2012, I realized for the first time that I could also use my YouTube channel for political content, specifically for the topics that I wasn't allowed to cover at the newspaper. In 2012, ECTA, the anti-counterfeiting trade agreement, was a big topic. There were lots and lots of discussions about copyright and critics worried that the freedom of the internet was at stake. So, of course, I wanted to write about ACTA in the newspaper. But, as always, my chief editor had other plans for me. He told me that our readers wouldn't be interested in that internet crap. And it bothered me so much that he didn't take the topic and me seriously that I took it into my own hands. So I took my video camera and I went to the little anti acta demonstration that took place in my hometown. I interviewed a few people there, asking them about their motivation, and I also shot a statement of myself explaining my own opinion. I edited the video and uploaded it to my YouTube channel where it got 20,000 views. In 2012, that was a lot, especially for my small channel. Because back then, I only had around 250 subscribers. Quite a few of these 20,000 people who watched my video about ECTA shared their opinions in the comment section. And it made me really happy to see that my video brought them together and initiated these discussions. It would be a downright lie if I told you that since then I only did political content on my channel. I didn't. Because after all, YouTube is an entertainment platform and I loved using it for that purpose. But every few weeks there was a more serious topic that made me think and that I did discuss with my viewers. For example, how we could deal with bullying at schools or why back then homosexual couples couldn't get married. Then, three years later, in 2015, three years after my video about ECTA, 
I got a new and very interesting opportunity to talk about politics on YouTube. I got asked if I wanted to work as an author and presenter for a public broadcasting television service. They just started a new documentary format that only aired on YouTube. For my, for my first documentary, I interviewed minor unaccompanied refugees and talked with them about their experiences with war and their difficult journeys to Germany. A few weeks later, my camera team and I went to Paris right after the Bataclan terrorist attacks and we reported from there. The feedback that we got from our viewers on YouTube was really positive and some of them even told us that we were their main source for political information. But we quickly realized that the more traditional journalists and editors often just saw us at, as that little internet project. And yeah, they didn't take us seriously. So now I was 20 years old and I was still angry because again, me and now also my team and our collective work weren't taken seriously. But we forced ourselves to look at the bright side. Most of our viewers were between 18 and 30 years old. They were exactly the target group that traditional media couldn't reach anymore. It took us a few more years until our little internet project became fully accepted. But today it is part of FUNK, that's the young program of the public broadcasting stations ARD and ZDF. And it is there together with several other documentary formats. So they realized as well how much potential political content on YouTube has. But Let's get back to my own YouTube channel. The small group of 250 people who subscribed to my channel in 2012 grew into 250,000 people in 2017. And with that, I became a so-called influencer. My goal for my YouTube channel was still mainly to entertain people. But I also wanted to use that influence for something good. For example, motivating my viewers to vote in the upcoming federal elections. I was lucky to get an opportunity that allowed me to do so. Together with three other YouTubers, I got to interview the German Chancellor. Before we did these interviews, each of us asked our viewers what they wanted to know from Angela Merkel. Together, we collected over 10,000 questions. They came from people our age. Yes, that infamous unpolitical generation that doesn't care about anything but likes and followers. Turns out they care about a lot of other things. Environmentalism, sustainability, digitization, LGBT rights, just to name a few. I mean, Fridays for Future is the best example for the heavy political engagement of young people. The interview with Angela Merkel was broadcasted as a live stream on YouTube, where it got almost 2 million views. We also did another piece with Chancellor candidate Martin Schulz that reached a similar amount of views, and the project also got a lot of coverage within the traditional media. But the most important thing was that I got dozens and dozens of messages from my young viewers telling me that thanks to our interviews, for the first time they got the feeling that politicians were actually interested in their questions and opinions. Since I did these interviews in 2017, lots of other political actors, NGOs and companies also started to get interested in political influencer campaigns. And that interest is still lasting. Since I did these interviews in 2017, I got to work, among others, with several federal ministries, NGOs and companies. And this year, for example, we did projects about 
the European election and the 30 year anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. These projects and videos resulted in lots of messages from my viewers telling me that they learned a lot of new things about politics through my videos, that my videos made them think and that they motivated them to get active themselves and to use their voices. And to hear that really gave me the feeling that my work had a purpose and that it was meaningful to them. There's one final project that I would like to tell you about before I end this talk because it is really special to me. In 2017, I went to Lebanon together with an NGO and two other YouTubers. We did a journalism workshop there together with a group of 20 young Syrian refugees. As refugees, they were not allowed to go to school or to university in Lebanon so this project was the only way for them to get an education there. We filmed a documentary with them, we wrote texts together and we even shot a music video. The results were published on our YouTube channels where we asked our viewers to support the project. Together we raised the money that was needed to finance the further education of these 20 young Syrian refugees and to save the project from being closed down. So, why am I telling you this? It's because I want to share with you the three most important things that I learned during these past 10 years. One, even if people are not taking you and your work seriously, if it feels right to you, if it feels meaningful to you, then keep on doing it. Two, some things just need time. Ten years ago, YouTube for me was just a hobby. A very, very unusual one that I got bullied for a lot at school. But today it became my job and also a very powerful tool for me. Three, on YouTube we can not only inform people about politics or motivate them to vote, Political engagement on YouTube and other social media sites can actually change lives for the better, like it did with our project in Lebanon. Today, I am 25 years old and I'm not that angry anymore because more and more people are actually using their voices and are not staying silent anymore. They are becoming aware of the positive power of social media. Using your voice, that's something that is not just reserved to traditional journalists. On the internet, there is no chief editor who's telling you what you're allowed to write about. You are your own chief editor. Not just as a YouTuber or a blogger, all of you are. So please, use your voices. Do participate in political discussions because your voices do matter especially in the fight against racism, sexism, homophobia, or any other kind of discrimination. Thank you. <laughs>